Hello, this is Mr. Hennen, and you are in the Institute as we learn about um, Chapter 11B, Fluid Dynamics. So today we're going to look more at volume flow rates and eventually get an equation of continuity. That's kind of our plan for today. So we'll see how things go. Um, first off, when you're talking about fluids in motion, there's a variety of terms that pop up. We're not going to be using all of these terms, but I thought I would bring them up just so you knew. So when we talk about something having a steady flow, it means the velocity of the particles is constant. We are going to be dealing with steady flow fluids, so we're not going to have the the particles moving at different speeds, uh, different points. When you saw your fluid simulation, we saw that a little bit. If you actually move that speed meter around, it'll change a little bit. This is because of unsteady flow. Whenever the fluid of the particles can, or the velocity of the particles can actually change. So this picture is kind of showing that maybe a fluid particle over here has a speed of half a meter per second, but a fluid particle here is two. Um, we'll see a little bit later why this happens. And then turbulent flow, if you've ever seen turbulent flow, if you've ever seen like um, uh, smoke coming off of a candle, how it'll kind of come up, but it'll eventually kind of twirl into funny shapes. This is because we have an extreme kind of unsteady flow in which the velocity of the particles change. We're going to deal with steady flow. Also, fluid flow can kind of fall into a couple other categories. We can talk about fluids being compressible or incompressible. Most fluids are nearly incompressible, so we're going to be assuming that they're incompressible. What that means is that the fluid cannot be compressed and changed into a new state. I know that water technically can, but for all of our purposes, when we talk about flowing water, we'll look at situations where they're not under a high enough pressure or a change in temperature that they're going to change state. The other one is fluid flow can have friction or not. So these pictures over here, this is fluid flow that is non-viscous. So non-viscous. What that means is this top one is representing I have no friction acting. So if you notice, all of the velocities are exactly the same on there. The bottom one would be viscous flow. So this is, would have friction. And if you notice, when you're near the wall, this particle has very little speed, and then the farther away you get, it gets closer and closer. So even for that, what we often use is we use the maximum that's at the center for the velocity of the fluid. For us, we're going to be looking at incompressible non-viscous fluids, which are called ideal fluids. We're also going to assume they have steady state or steady flow, just to let you know that we are not going to get into anything complicated beyond that. So we, you've probably seen this, that a lot of pictures will show streamlines as you actually have these fluids flowing over. This is an example of a person uh, bicycling and they're in a wind tunnel showing those streams, which is kind of showing those flow rates. So the first thing we have is this equation of continuity. And before we can get to that, we, can, we have to talk about what we refer to as the mass flow rate. And this is the mass of the fluid that passes through something per second. So if I have water, say, for example, coming out of this hose, we talk about the mass of the water coming out in a particular amount of time. And to calculate that mass, we're just going to borrow the density equation. We know the density is mass over volume. So if you're talking about a change in mass, then you want the density of the fluid times the volume. And then here's the cool idea. So volume, I know, is actually, if I think of this tube, for example, the volume of this would actually be the area of the end. area and then it would be multiplied by this distance but this distance if I actually have a fluid flowing through here the idea is this distance would be the speed of the fluid multiplied by the time interval that it's acting for so that's why we're plugging this in for um, finding the volume of it so I have an area times a speed or a velocity Mostly I'm going to use V here, but it's really more of a speed as opposed to a velocity and then multiply by the time. So what we do is we often bring that T over the other side. And so we talk about the mass flow rate. So the change in mass over a certain time. And basically you've got rho two times A two times V two. So if I was looking at this particular place, you talk about 
how fast it's moving here, the area of it, and the density, and then the same thing over here. The equation of continuity basically says that the mass flow rate is the same value at every position. So in other words, this is going to be a true statement. And mass flow rate, exactly like it sounds, would be kilograms per second. So it's not actually the speed, it's the mass flowing through here. Now, for us and our purposes, we're going to be dealing with incompressible fluid. So our density is going to stay constant. So we're not going to actually have that. So you'll see me actually write the equation of continuity more like this where I don't actually have densities at these two different points. And then what we're getting here is now we refer to this as the volume flow rate. So this is the volume divided by time because I've gotten rid of density. I've gotten rid of the mass component. So V over T, the volume over time is equal to the area times the speed. Keep in mind, big V is volume. And this little v is actually the speed or the velocity. This unfortunately is going to be a confusion and I don't have a good way around it. So if you notice here, they actually show with a slightly different way. So let's use this as an example. You've probably all done this before where you have a garden hose and you put your thumb over the end of it like this person is doing right here. So when they put their thumb over the end, the, suddenly the, the water comes out faster. You're not actually changing anything about the the volume flow rate, you are just changing the area, which is therefore changing the speed. So the idea of this is a garden hose has an unobstructed, it can fill, has a cross-sectional area of this much, so it gives us the area, and it fills up a bucket, so it has a volume in 30 seconds. I want you to find the speed of it when it's unobstructed, and then when you cut it by half. So the key idea here is the volume flow rate should equal the area times the speed, and this is gonna stay constant. No matter what's true about the area. So I have the volume, this eight times 10 to the minus three cubic meters, divide that by the time of 30 seconds, and that should equal the area of the hose, 2.85 times 10 to the minus four, multiply by speed and then we should be able to solve for that speed. So kind of a neat idea. This is our equation of continuity that we're going to use and it should help us out with a lot of our problems. So here they kind of show this, they plug in this, we've got A times this, so then they multiply by um, or they divide by the area, sorry, and that gives us the speed of the fluid flowing through there. Now this is one way to write the equation of continuity. The other way to write the equation of continuity is with this equation, that the product of area times speed has to stay constant, or the product of area times velocity has to stay constant. So if I'm going to cut the area in half, the speed would have to double to make up for this. So if the area goes down by a factor of two, the velocity would go up by a factor of two. And you can see that here, that if you put your thumb over the end and you cut it in half, you should actually get it to go up even higher. So just some neat stuff that you can do with the equation of continuity. This kind of finishes everything we need for fluids. And we are going to go from there and see what we can answer in terms of our lovely questions. Hope you enjoyed this edition of the Institute.